friends. Uh, thank you for joining us at PCI Connecting the World. I'm Dr. Do from Beijing Fire Hospital. And today I also uh, have uh, some colleagues uh, from all over the world, uh, including uh, Dr. Liang from Taiwan. Uh, would you please say hi to audience, Dr. Liang? And uh, uh, Dr. Note from Peru, uh, Dr. Hill from Spain, and Dr. Morales uh, from Mexico. And due to the, the COVID pandemic, and uh, we can't uh, meet face-to-face uh, -face and share our experience. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter. And we can uh, stay here to share our experience and knowledge about interventional cardiology. And today, uh, and at first, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Liang, uh, from ta Taiwan, uh, uh, to share uh, her experience and, and uh, the knowledge about uh, her successful CTO case. Uh, please, Dr. Liang. Well, we, we can't hear you, uh, Dr. Dr. Liang. Would you please turn off the mute? Okay. Could any, uh, so, uh, hello, uh, yeah, could yeah, yeah. everyone yeah, yeah. see my slide? Yeah. Please uh, play your uh, slide in full screen. Oh, okay. Oh, thanks. Hello, uh, hello everyone, and thanks, Chairman's introduction. It's my honor to be the first one to uh, share my uh, cases uh, with. Uh, this is my topic. I said in my successful CTO cases, uh, uh, sharing achieve success with good PCI tool, and I want uh, every expert's opinion to make this CTO case maybe better. Okay, so first case was a 45 year old man. He was admitted to the non staining and uh, we could see from his ECG, there's uh, a seat depression over uh, V5, V6, and kind of borderline ST elevation over lane one and LDL. So we see his diagnostic angiogram. From, from this view, we could see suspect uh, left main shaft lesion and uh, proximal to mid uh, LADD lesion. And from this caudal view, we could see the big diagonal one has some haziness lesion, suspect a uh, thrombotic lesion. And obviously, the CERC has osteo lesion, followed by proximal total occlusion. Scene has intracornial collateral. Dr. Liang, are you still with us? Dr. Liang, can you see this is the problem? We can't hear him talk. It's his internet connection. Okay. Dr. Liang, can you hear us? Yes, we can wait for him to continue or continue to continue. And because of the 
the signal problem, we move to another, the next speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Note from Peru. Uh, he will talk about complex bifurcation PCI. Dr. Note, I will stay with, stay with us. Yeah. Please. Thank you very much. Um, I'll share my video. Well, to the presentation. No, uh, please share uh, share your slides. Share yeah, your yeah. screen. I was going to do it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now can you, can you see my presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Okay, so um, thank you, everybody. Uh, good morning here in Peru, maybe good afternoon in Spain, and good night over there in China. It's almost 6 30 in the morning here in Peru. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Christian Nolte, I'm an interventional cardiologist in, in Lima, Peru, and I'd like to thank. APT for the invitation. Um, here I, I am showing you some pictures of the city that I live in. And as you can see, we have uh, really nice views. We have really good food. So whenever you wanna come to Peru, you're more than, than welcome. Uh, in order to get into the case, these are my conflicts of interest and I do not have any potential conflict of interest to disclose right now. Uh, this is a 59-year-old man from Tarapoto. Tarapoto is a small town in the forest of Peru, and you can see it here in red, uh, with known hypertension. He has prior medical history of myocardial infarction eight years ago. Remember, as you can see there, he's in his current, current medication was beta blockers, nitrates, statins, aspirin, and his antihypertensive medication. The patient started his clinical presentations five days before getting into our hospital. Uh, he started with uh, 10 over 10 chest pain intensity associated with dyspnea. And after 14 hours, he went to, he had his first medical contact on a non-PCI center. Uh, the thing with some of our provinces here in Peru is that they do not have um, cath labs. So um, Tarapot is one of those, those uh, cities that do not have cath labs. So the, the patient just stayed in medical treatment at the hospital. Um, approximately on the fourth to fifth day, he started with angina again. So at that point, uh, because of Post myocardial infarction angina, he was transferred uh, to Lima for a to a hospital with PCI. Uh, just to promotion uh, Peru, here are some pictures of the rainforest in Tarapoto. Again, if you want to come and visit, more than welcome. So the patient had mm. to fly all the way from Tarapoto to to Lima. Uh, and here's uh, the institute that I work in. It's the National Cardiovascular Institute. It's located in Lima, Peru, and we have three cath labs in there. So uh, this is the ECG at admission in the emergency room. And as you can see, it has already Q waves on the infra and in anterior wall with T wave is inversion, um, diagnosing an apical uh, acute uh, an apical myocardial infarction with which was uh, which had five days but still the patient was with chest pain and the T negative waves that could speak about um, open artery. So with this um, ECG the patient went into the cath lab and that's here's the angiogram and as you can see we have that severe lesion on the mid RCA and on the distal uh, right coronary artery. 
Uh, then we have that uh, really diffuse disease uh, postural branch and a PDA that has that severe lesion on the osteal uh, segment. On the left coronary, we have a uh, left main, which is okay. And then we have that uh, circumflex that it's really diseased, lots, lots of calcium in there. Um, all the mid segment of the circ and the distal part of the circ and all those marginals that have uh, osteal lesion, lesions and proximal lesions, but they have like really good diameter on the distal part. And the LED, which was the, the vessel uh, responsible for the infarction, as you can see, had a thrombotic occlusion, but we still had um, some uh, flow into the distal part of the, uh, of the artery. So at that point, uh, we decided to open the artery because of the postmyocardial infarction angina. Um, and here's the angioplasty. We, it was a straightforward angioplasty. The guide wire went through really easy. And we deployed two stents on Ultimaster 2.5 by 28 in the distal LED and um, overlapped with this one, a proximal stent Ultimaster 2.7 T5. Uh, and that's the final result. And as you can see, it's a huge LED. It goes all the way to inferior wall, and which explains the, the, the changes in the ECG, uh, st speaking about in an apical uh, myocardial infarction. This is the echo that was performed the next day. Uh, and as you can see, there are a, a little bit of hypokinesia on the inferior wall, the lateral wall and the basal segments. And we can see a thrombus formation in the apex of the left ventricle. The conclusions of that echocardiogram was ischemic cardiomyopathy with left ventricular ejection fraction of 49%, uh, akinesia of all the apical segments, hypokinesia of the inferior lateral wall, uh, an apical thrombus, which was uh, measured 25 by 12 millimeters, and that um, it had characteristics of non-embolization. Uh, he also had mild mitral regurgitation. So uh, 48 hours later, the patient was stable, creatinine levels were okay, there was no um, kidney damage at that point. Uh, so we planned to go for the non-culprit vessels at that point. And we started uh, for, for this approach, we use the radial axis. I like to use left radial axis. And we used uh, the APT Medical 6 French introducer, which as you can see, comes with that guide wire, which just goes in really smooth. And um, the um, introducer itself, it's really hydrophilic. It has this braided structure and the shaft design that uh, permits uh, or enhances the, the sheet's pushability and improves of the kinkin resistance. And another characteristic of this introducer that, that, that it has a, a really thin wall, which reduces the outer diameter. Um, and this permits uh, or minimizes the vessel stress reducing the risk of um, spasm of the, of the artery. So we went in with, although that, that images weren't of this patient, but we used that, that, um, that introducer. So uh, we went in and made this a straightforward um, angioplasty of the RCA. Uh, we, we used a resolute integrity 2.5 by 26 millimeter in the distal um, segment of the right coronary artery just into the uh, PDA using a provisional technique. And we use a resolute integrity 3.5 by 22 on the mid segment of the, of the RCA. And you can see the result of that angioplasty on the left side. And after that, we went to do the, the circumflex.
to to this angiogram is just to remember the the, the severe diffuse disease that had this artery. You know, it has bifurcations and calcifications. Uh, so for this um, angioplasty, what we used was, uh, well, first we, sorry, we planned a little bit what we were going to do with this um, artery. And the planning was you, making provisional stenting on the distal segment of the circumflex and on the proximal segment of the circumflex, as it was a really good um, first marginal, we decided to do two stent technique. And because of the anatomy, um, what we uh, were planning to do is a tap. So we started the angioplasty. We used this uh, March XB 3.5 uh, six French guiding catheter from APT Medical again. Um, which again is, I think it's a good catheter. It has this multi-density braid design, which um, provides kind of superior buck up support. And the tip is really, really soft. Uh, and for these cases, I really like to use soft tips. So um, we started the angioplasty, uh, getting that choice intermediate uh, guide wire into the distal part of the first marginal. And then we tried to uh, go down to the uh, distal circumflex with this choice extra support guide wire. But we had many difficulties at this point to get down the, the guide wire. So we changed it for a floppy wire at that point and we used a choice floppy. And we, when we pushed, we just, we um, managed to see that there was a loop in this artery that went right into the second marginal. So, um, uh, I mean, probably the difficulties of going down into the uh, left circumflex itself had to do with uh, the origin of the distal circumflex itself. So what we did is uh, we changed the projection and we went into the spider view to just understand a little bit the anatomy of how it how to get into the distal segment of the circumflex and what we what we see there is that we had this 90 degree kind of like retrograde angle to get into the distal circumflex and here we had that loop that went into <clears throat> the second marginal so uh, what we did is we just left that um, guide wire on the loop and we got in a third wire. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have this uh, choice intermediate on the first marginal. Then we left the choice floppy on, the, um, on that initial segment of that loop and with a whisper medium support and bending the tip almost 90 degrees and trying to get it retrograde, we managed to get into the distal segment of the, of the circumflex. Uh, after that, we pushed a little bit the, um, the guide wire. And as you can see here, we are way out of the true lumen. So uh, we decided to use a little bit of support up here to try to get into the true lumen. Uh, at that point, we didn't have any micro catheters. So we used a support, a balloon, a 1.0 balloon by 10. And um, by trying to get into the distal segment of the, of the circumflex, we managed to position the wire in the distal part of the fourth marginal. And as you can see, just by getting the 1.0 balloon through the circumflex, we didn't have any flow through that artery. I mean, we, we could feel that we were in the true woman. And also we have some collaterals in the, to the distal part of that uh, circumflex of that um, marginal that made us know that we were in the true woman. So at that point we started to pre-dilate the lesion. We pre-dilated all the distal segment and the proximal segment of the circumflex with a 
progressed progressively with a 1.0 and a 2.0 millimeter uh, balloons. And um, after dilation of all the segments, we managed to uh, gain some, some lumen and we had now a really good integrate um, flow of the artery. At that point, we already lost the third marginal that was here, but it was parallel to the fourth one. So we continued with a with a initial plan that was doing provisional stenting in the in this segment, what which was the distal segment of the circumflex right into the fourth marginal. Uh, so we deployed that first stand, which was an Ultimaster 2.5 by 33. And this is the Anjo after deploying that stent. So after doing this um, provisional stenting, then we were we went to the proximal um, angioplasty of, by, of the bifurcation. So again, uh, what we were planning to do is the TAP, which is a T in small protrusion, um, considering a two cent technique in the bifurcation and considering the proximal circumflex and the first marginal as the main vessel and the distal circumflex as the side branch because of the T that made over there. So we started to prepare the lesions uh, for the main vessel stent. And as you can see, lots of calcium in the origin of that first marginal. So we predilated it with a 2.5 millimeter balloon and then a non-compliant balloon, uh, 2.5 by 12, which uh, at that point we managed to break uh, this calcium here and um, advance the, the stent into the main vessel. We used an Ultimaster 3.0 by 33 because of the distal um, diameter. And this angel, it looks a little bit uh, narrower, but on the diagnostic um, angel, it held a little bit more diameter. So that's why we use a 3.0. But the, as you can see, the proximal segment is way much wider, probably 4.0 uh, millimeters. So we deployed the stent at nominal only. And this is the, the result of uh, stenting the main vessel. As you can see, we have good diameters distally. We put some nitrates and then we recross with the wire, making sure that we cross through the distal um, cell of the of the stent. After crossing the distal segment of the stent, we we rewired the the first marginal and we predilated to open the cells with a 2.0 by 20 balloon uh, in the stent that was uh, deployed at the, in the main vessel. After that. Uh, we advanced another Ultimaster 3.0 by 28 millimeter into the um, side branch. And we were sure that we were overlapping the stent with the stent previously deployed in the distal uh, circumflex. And uh, we used this um, spider view because it was the view that better, um, uh, we had better a view of the initial segment of the of the distal circumflex. So we protruded the the stent uh, one or two millimeters as it says the technique, and we deployed it uh, there. So the, here's the image of deploying that stent. Then we did the kissing uh, balloon, the kissing inflation in the main vessel and the side branch stents. And this is the, the result of after the, the kissing. We have a good result in the, circum, in the distal circumflex. We have good results in the uh, first marginal. And then we had to do uh, the final pot that, with a much bigger balloon. 
just to remember the overexpansion capacity of the stents and using the OT Master 3.0 stent, we could expand it a little bit with a up to a 5.0 balloon. So what we did is we used a 4.0 by 12 millimeter non-compliant balloon to expand the proximal part as the final pot. And this is our final result. Uh, we lost this third marginal, but we gained really good. Um, we had really good results with the first and the second and third margins. And if we compare the initial angiogram here with a severely diffused disease of all the proximal and distal circumflex and the origin of all the marginals, I think we achieved a really good result in there. Uh, the patient went back into ICU. Uh, he stayed there for two, two more days and was discharged. And now he's all the way back in his country, in, in his town in, in Taraboto. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, it says here, some day they asked me, where is Peru? And I answered, it's right here in my chest on the left side. So thank you very much for your attention. This is the case that I wanted to share with you all. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Norte, for a great case. And uh, you also show us beautiful city. And uh, thank you for your lecture. And any comment and question from other colleagues? Dr. Gu, Dr. Morales, any comment for? Hello, uh, good morning, Mexico. Hello, Christian. Hi. It's a, a very interesting Hello. case, I think, um, because uh, the tortuosity always in the less circumflex is uh, very complicated situations all times. I think that this uh, case uh, was a very good result uh, in their um, center. Uh, you use uh, some uh, uh, devices like an IBUS or uh, tom tomography for guidance your uh, PCI or something. Uh, you have any questions? Does any comment about that? Or, or only that uh, geographic results is uh, enough? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it should be, we should have done um, IVOS, but uh, as you know, our reality in countries of, of South America, we yeah, I know because uh, because of this, uh, I know the situation in, in Latin America, yeah, Mexico City. We have the same situation with yeah. uh, some uh, um, yeah, uh, that's uh, we didn't centers. Have the IVOS with us. Uh, we do IVOS in the institute, but you know um, the the kind kind of like the, the, it, it's a um, national hospital. So they buy stuff and then there are some periods of time where we don't have, so we did at that point, we didn't have uh, IVOS, but yes, your, your comment is, is really good because we, we should have ended with an IVOS uh, to see the, the position of the stands and, mm -hmm. but no, we uh, didn't. I know that the uh, angiography result is very nice. Uh... It's only a choice for, uh, for try to comment because uh, this uh, situation is very uh, very common in Latin America and uh, Mexico City we have a, a, a lot of centers with, without uh, imaging devices so the, um, I think it's a great result in angiographic the follow uh, the patient is, is good and um, and that's the comments yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I fully agree uh, your comments and uh, I think uh, uh, IVERS will improve the immediate and long-term outcome for the patient. But for some experienced doctors, if I have, I have a lot of experience on IVERS, sometimes they can skip over the, the IVERS uh, checking. And uh, I think um, it's also a reasonable, reasonable for Kernoti as an experienced the, uh, interventional cardiologist, uh, he, he, he didn't use the IVERS. And uh, as we scheduled, uh, um, uh, I will be the next speaker and talk about uh, how to organize a CTO program in, in big center. Let me show you the, can you see the slides?
Can you see the slides? Yes. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, first of all, I must thank the APD Corporation invite me here to uh, talk about how to establish an efficient and successful CTU program in the lab uh, PCI center. We know, uh, uh, we all know the CTO uh, procedure uh, becomes standard and very popular uh, in uh, interventional cardiologists. And uh, uh, if you have time, you take your time to do the uh, CTO PCI and uh, the success rate is very high. But there is some problem in, in, in large PCI center. And first I will show you the case number in Fuai Hospital. Uh, from six years ago, uh, Yearly case number in Fuai Hospital is uh, approximately fifteen thousand every year, and uh, uh, and the CTO cases increase the increase the every year. And in uh, two thousand eighteen, the CTO case is two thousand and one uh, hundred eighty nine uh, in Fuai Hospital. We, uh, we can see the uh, the case number increase the every year. And there's some challenge uh, in a lot of PCI center. The first, uh, we have many, many uh, patients and a, uh, a large proportion of the patients are transferred from local hospital uh, with very uh, complicated anatomy and uh, uh, clinical conditions. And another problem is in our hospital, we have limited cath lab. And uh, averagely one operator only has less than one day uh, for one week. And every day they have to do around 25 cases. And so that's a very, very tough uh, work. And uh, in another uh, uh, hand, in other hand, uh, we also have very experienced hungry cardiac surgeons there. And they want, they want more and the more uh, cases for them. And uh, that's the, the problem in a large PCI uh, center. And I can show you the uh, every day in our center is very busy. Many, many teams uh, work from the morning to the, to the midnight and uh, uh, it's uh, really hard work. And, uh, and some doctors are from our hospital, uh, especially some, some old doctors and uh, they always say we don't need, because we have many, many patients, we don't need to CTOPCI, but I still think uh, uh, we should organize uh, efficient and uh, uh, effective P uh, CTO programming in our hospital. And uh, uh, because and uh, as a as a big doc, a big center, and that's the duty and the honor to uh, solve some uh, problems for the local uh, hospital. And our goal is to uh, make the to to get the clean uh, nickel beneficial, uh, successful, efficient and safe uh, procedures. But how to achieve uh, this goal? And uh, we need to think about it. And uh, first of all, uh, I think uh, uh, to establish an efficient and successful CTO program in large PCI centers to uh, build a CTO teams. And in this team, we need a, a senior expert and play a and, and very important role. And, uh, and then we need uh, some junior uh, independent operators. Uh, uh, they are the major operators for the CTO cases. And also uh, we have young doctors in this team and they will learn some knowledge and technique from uh, the very beginning and be familiar with the whole procedure for CTO teams. And uh, also we need some very experienced nurses and technicians and to help uh, the, uh, our procedure go smoothly. And uh, you can see in, in our uh, center, uh, because of uh, at least uh, 50 uh, independent operators, we have many, many uh, teams. So we build uh, at least the five or six CTO teams. And another thing as technique and strategy training is very important. Yeah, we, we organized the uh, uh, many center uh, to talk about CTO. Uh, to transfer knowledge to the young doctors. And first, uh, we will uh, teach them a CTO indication and the contraindication, uh, when to stop a CTO procedure, and about some technical details, and from the basic knowledge, uh, how to do a good angiography, how to choose guiding catheter, 
and uh, uh, use iris and uh, microcatheter and some problem uh, solving uh, uh, lecture. And, uh, and finally, after master all the strategy, uh, we will uh, we'll help the young doctors to know how to choose appropriate strategy, anti, retro, ADR, and uh, strategy switch. And uh, here's a, a example and uh, the very beginning uh, for the young doctors, so we must show them uh, how to do the bilateral uh, angiography. And uh, uh, we can see, uh, do the bilateral in, uh, injection, uh, first inject from donor vessel first and wait one or two seconds before injecting the CT vessel, no panning, uh, sitting until contrast uh, clears. And we also uh, uh, let young doctors know and uh, use dual angiography, uh, 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 dual angiography during the PSI uh, can help the uh, pay, uh, can help the doctor uh, to do uh, many many things, uh, including stopping tumor uh, crossing and the wire redirection and the, and the guide as thinking. Uh, and this is a case and uh, uh, from one of my colleagues. Uh, He's, uh, he's very stubborn and never used bilateral. And we can see here is a LAD CTO, uh, not very long. And uh, uh, without the uh, uh, bilateral injection, and he, uh, he used, used the stiff wire crossing the, uh, the CTO segment and after dilatation and a uh, huge, uh, uh, you can see uh, perforation happen here and the patient to transfer the uh, cardiac surgery. And also we will teach doctor, uh, young doctors how to uh, use a guiding catheter support, choose the uh, right uh, guiding catheter. Uh, these are very fundamental skills, but they have to master. And for, uh, 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 for doctors, and before they start to uh, 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 do CTO cases independently, we also let them the master the iris knowledge and to improve the CTO success rate. We can see an uh, infoy hospital and uh, uh, with the, uh, if the, uh, you use iris and to guide the CTO cases, uh, the success rate uh, uh, two years ago is around the uh, uh, 83%. But if you don't uh, use iris uh, to guide the CTO and only 65% success rate. And uh, another thing is to make a plan on the basis of the lesion characteristics. And the way we always uh, make the decision based on the hybrid algorithm and the CQCC algorithm and also APCQ uh, algorithm. And the third thing uh, I need to address here is uh, we need approved, uh, appropriate time to uh, do the CTO case. Uh, we must have a preset CTO time. We need a whole day or at least a part of day. And the no need to consider other cases. and. Uh, the CTO case should be at daytime, uh, not in midnight. And uh, we suggest you do a planned CTO procedure and not an ad hoc CTO, especially high score cases. And th this is uh, well, one of my case, a nightmare that happened in midnight. It's not a very complicated case. And uh, and I used uh, a wire to cross the CTO, but get into a sub -intimate. I used the stingray. And uh, here, and the, but because it's midnight, I didn't notice that uh, the stingray blown uh, didn't uh, uh, dance with the main vessel. And I use stingray wire to puncture, you know what will happen. And you can see the, the perforation here, I uh, have to transfer the uh, patient uh, to cardiac surgery. And finally, uh, the patient result is good, but uh, and then from then on, I, I will never do CTO cases at, uh, at midnight. And uh, there is some successful experience uh, in our hospital, Dr. Wu, Professor Wu organized the first CTO day program. And in, in his team, uh, they only do CTO program in weekend from 8 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m. And they did a lot of very successful uh, cases. And uh, for CTO cases, uh, we need teamwork. And in this teamwork, and senior experts do cases or support the younger doctors. Uh, in my team, always a double independent operatory system. You can see uh, these two guys are uh, uh, two uh, younger uh, independent operators and they use the earphone to connect, communicate, and uh, to talk about the cases. 
and then they support a, a younger, a, a very young doctor to do the CTO cases. And then uh, based on this teamwork, uh, uh, they improve it together and improve it very rapidly. And uh, uh, for a CTO operator, we need uh, always to review and analyze uh, the cases and, and to promote the everybody improving the improve the uh, procedure level. Uh, in China, we, we use the uh, WeChat, uh, something like uh, Twitter, we build uh, groups and to talk about uh, uh, the cases, what happened, uh, the complication and the techniques. And uh, also, I think communication with other doctors is very important. We invite uh, many, uh, many experienced doctors uh, to uh, come to our hospital and also uh, go to other hospitals to do cases and to communicate uh, uh, with colleagues will improve uh, us a lot. And another important thing is to support from cardiac surgeon is also important, very important. We thought their help and uh, a lot of the disaster, disaster will happen. And uh, I will show you the, and the achievement uh, in my CTO uh, team. And in 2018, and in my team, and the CTO case is around 250. Average G score is 1.9, procedure success rate is 88%. But uh, we have uh, six uh, perforation cases and two emergency cabbage cases. Uh, after uh, I uh, I tried to uh, build an uh, effective, efficient uh, CTO program. In last year, uh, my team, uh, we have two CTO cases, 355, and the average G score 1.88, uh, and success rate is around 92%. Only two perforation, and there is no emergency uh, cabbage. So uh, I think uh, in the next two years, uh, hopefully, we will have six CTO teams and the modern uh, child experience uh, uh, hybrid CTO PCI operators. And we will have more than 3,000 CTO cases and procedure success rates uh, will uh, uh, be uh, greater than 85%. And let me show you uh, two cases uh, uh, they, were, they were done by young uh, doctors. After uh, training, uh, after organized the CTO program, they master knowledge and techniques uh, they can think independently and do the case independently. And we can see this uh, patient after cabbage and circumflex uh, CTO and uh, accrued in more than uh, 15 years. And the young doctor uh, tried to uh, integrate a field and then used the wing graft and the retrograde uh, access. And uh, uh, un, uh, uh, based on the retrograde uh, uh, guide and use a, a stiff wire to crossing the uh, CQ lesion and then uh, get a uh, very good result uh, in one hour. And this is a, uh, uh, another case, uh, uh, it's a, a right coronary CQ and uh, a first time uh, failed in other uh, hospital and all young doctors. And the first that they used the iris guide to find the entry point and after uh, antibody, the wire failed and they go retrograde rapidly. And uh, uh, the, the retrograde uh, uh, microcatheter can't cross the collateral. Uh, uh, he, he ballooned the uh, septal and then uh, pushed the fine cross across the, uh, the septal and then do the uh, ribs cut. And he switched the strategy very, very fast and uh, fixed this uh, complicated cases uh, in only uh, 18 minutes. And so finally, uh, I would like uh, to say uh, after organize the uh, uh, effective CTO program, uh, we can uh, do CTO cases very well, even in a busy and a big center. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, any comments? And uh, I can't hear you guys. I can't see you. I, I believe that that's a, an amazing job because um, uh, one of the most uh, uh, important things uh, in a very big center with a, a lot of procedures all days uh, is try to um, to have the time for to do this uh, CTPCI because uh, 
uh, Mexico, for example, have a, another, another center with a, a lot of uh, charts of the patients uh, with acute myocardial infarction or something. And of course, uh, uh, try to build a CTO program with uh, procedures uh, very complex, uh, a long time. It's complicated. I think this uh, uh, situation is very nice. 25 patients days, 200, uh, 300 cases per year, this, and a very uh, uh, few complications. I think it's, a, it's a very nice, guys. Uh, thank you, Dr. Morales. And uh, uh, do you always do CTO uh, cases uh, in, uh, uh, in one day, or, or do, do the CTO case uh, ad hoc, or, or after planning the strategy? Yeah, of course not. I think, I think that you said that uh, all CTO cases are uh, not for to do ad hoc. Uh, you need to do uh, planning. And you, you, mm -hmm. you need a, a specific time for try to perform this uh, CTO mm -hmm. In our case, mm -hmm. uh, we have a few uh, cat labs uh, than you. <laughs> we have a less uh, uh, infrastructure about that. So we decided to um, program one day from the week for try to open the CTO. And of course, with the same uh, uh, team, I think, uh, we try to create this experience with uh, three interventional cardiologists in the hospital, spe specifically uh, the nurse, of course, uh, in the cat lab but that we have to try to perform the great uh, majority of cases of CTO. I think it is a cool uh, possibility to, to create uh, this experience in, in our center is important, like you said about the, the team. And uh, of course, all, all the cases are uh, planning, all the cases uh, uh, review from the indication, indication from the um, uh, perfusion and the cardinal uh, ischemia. And of course, if they have uh, any others, um, indication for the city of PCI you know, in China or something, uh, not for ad hoc. Okay, uh, thank you. Any comment, uh, Dr. Norte? And uh, is there a uh, same thing happening in Peru, in your center? Uh, yeah, uh, at this time, like, w once again, uh, we have um, the Latin American forms of uh, materials. So, uh, the CTOs that we do in, in the institute are only anti-grade. We do not do retrograde because we don't have the material. The only times that we have done retrograde is when we had like, uh, live curses that uh, we had instructors coming from outside. Uh, but we are trying to get into a CTO program. Uh, we don't, don't have something organized right now. But, uh, you know, with all the limitations that we have with, with materials, uh, we have uh, probably a 60 to 70 percent of success on the antibody. Of course, we use, uh, we, we select our cases uh, that are not that difficult, not many calcium, straightforward lesions, you know, but it's just because we don't have the, the material right now. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you can you get enough material uh, device and uh, and uh, organize a, a good program, uh, you, you guys will improve very fast. And, uh, uh, I think um, for retrograde and the ADR is not that complicated. After twenty or thirty cases, you will feel free to do that. And and believe me, you you you, you can do that in the near future. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And. Uh, Dr. Adil, any, any comments? And... Okay, uh, uh, in our cat lab, uh, okay, first to say that the numbers are uh, amazing. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, two cat labs and we are uh, five uh, uh, physicians and our CTO programs, uh, it's, uh, Two of my colleagues are working the most of the times in this angioplans are programs, and uh, but probably will will need uh, more time. Is is the, the, the main problem for us yeah. because uh, 
uh, we do the same as in, in Mexico. We need uh, ischemia tests. We, we need uh, a lot of uh, specific things to 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 go with a with a CTO. Mm. No, no, never at all can um, plan um, with a lot of time. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Liang, and, uh, if you want to make some comments, and uh, you can do that and then start your uh, case presentation, please. Yeah. Oh. Thanks. Hello, everyone. It's my honor to... Uh, uh, introduce myself again. <laughs> I'm Dr. Liang, and today uh, it's my honor to uh, present a case after Professor Du because he just mentioned the thing that I, I, I want to uh, ask either. So today I share uh, my successful CTO cases and achieve success with good CTO PCI tools. Okay, let's see the first case. Uh, this is a 45-year-old man admitted due to non staining and we can see his ECG. There's a borderline ST elevation over the lead one AVL and ST depression over B4 and B2V6. And we can see his diagnostic angiogram. It seems like there's a left main shaft, uh, maybe 50% stenosis and proximal to mid diffuse LA deletion. And from uh, uh, codal view, we can see uh, there's a haziness over the big diagonal branch, suspect a thrombotic lesion. And there's a cerc osteal lesion with proximal total occlusion and intracoronary collateral. And this is the patient's right corneal artery. From proximal to mid diffuse lesion and discrete uh, distal lesion over the right corneal artery. So let's see this case. Uh, also, today is a PISA conference, but I think when we encounter this kind of non staining case, uh, left man, uh, three basal disease, third osteo lesion, uh, proximal total occlusion, I think the first question is uh, how about cabbage? But in this case, we have a consultant cardiovascular surgeon is due uh, to the high procedure risk, patient reviews. So the patient back to, uh, back to my, <laughs> back to here again. So the next question is, how many lesions would you want to treat? Left man uh, or not to touch the left man? Uh, Cirque total and how many stents do you want to put? And the next question is, which lesion do you want to touch first? Left side or right side? Because from the, uh, uh, this is my strategy. Because from the uh, electro, uh, electrocardiogram, we seen borderline ST elevation over lay one AVO. I think during acute stage of myocardium, infarction, I will fix the copper lesion only. So I will treat the diagonal lesion this time. Since treating the remaining left side uh, lesion will be the big project. So I will prefer fix the right corner lesion the second time and leave the left total occlusion the last time because it potential left total occlusion, potential left main bifurcation, diffuse LA lesion, I will leave it in the last time. So in the index uh, uh, procedure, I put a very middle stand to the diagonal branch. And you, we could see after the procedure, the flow resumed and the patient's chest pain will improve. And three days later, as our initial plan, we put a two stand over the proximal and distal RCA. And we let the patient discharge. And two months later, the patient admitted again for the left coronary artery intervention. And from uh, last time, during injection angiogram, like Professor Du just told us, it was very important to perform dual injection angiogram because it could help us to analyze the CT, uh, CTO, including at the entry point. And honestly, initially from this uh, diagnosis uh, angiogram, I think the entry point was not very clear. And from the spider view, the CTO length seems over 20 millimeter. Uh, there's no angulation, during the CTO course and no calcification and the distal trigonal was healthy. So my strategy is, uh, in most of case, we will use diagnosis jotting right for a contralateral injection because, but in this case, because his uh, right side can engage very well. So I choose guiding uh, catheter and put a CR wire to stabilize the catheter 
for a better quality contralateral injection. And then I use uh, our antibody approach with a strong support uh, guiding caster. I choose seven French vocal left uh, guiding caster and use APT microcatheter and Xiang wire. And fortunately, my Xiang wire could cross nearly proximal half of the total cushion. So I think this the proximal half may be functional total. The real total cushion, maybe uh, this part, is not as long as the 20 uh, millimeter. After Xiang wire touched the total cushion, I switched to Asahi Gaia second wire and manipulate Gaia wire gently. And by the, uh, just like Professor Du just said, when we perform uh, CTO, uh, bilateral orthogonal view was very important because it will guide us to control our wire direction. So by uh, bilateral orthogonal view, I control my Gaia wire gently. And finally, the Gaia wire cross digital cap on the APT microcatheter support. And let's see. The guy where I finally crossed the distal, distal cap. And after sequential balloon dilatation, we can see the uh, small circ vessel appear now. So the next question is, uh, where should we put our stent? Uh, because it, it seems uh, diffuse lesion. And should we put our stent into the left man? Because it seems a uh, osteo lesion. How is the strategy? So now we need IVAS. Okay. From IVAS, uh, from CERC, we can see uh, over here, over here, it's, uh, there's a few plug over here. So I think this position may be a good landing zone. And Ivers could also told us the truly size of the left circumferential. And we could see the left circumferential have a three O size near the OSTN. And from the carina, we, we could see the plug was extended from client carina to left man. So we think the stem may be need to cross over from circle to left man. In addition, we also check Ivers from the LED you can see this is a distal, uh, distal lumen, a good landing zone. And the size is around 3.0 to 3.5. And from the carina, we can see the LAD Ostian still have a uh, huge plug burden. Uh, a little, a few plug burden over the carina, but still a uh, much uh, plug burden into left mirror. So in my opinion, I think the left mirror bifurcation may be still a Medina 111. So I still need two stand strategy. And in this case, also the surface seems very small, but from Ivers, it has 3.0 diameter. And the LAD's OCM has a 3.5 diameter. So my strategy was cool technique, since the diameter of two branches was similar. And the angle, I think, was about uh, 80 degree, and which cool was uh, kind of familiar. <laughs> so I put, um, I put the first dent on. The landing zone was guided by Ivers because by IVAS, we know there's few plug burden. After the first stem and the second stem from surf extending into left man, we, per, we use 4 O balloon to perform part. And then uh, NC balloon for a post balloon dilatation. Then to perform an important step of Kulo, that means we will wiring uh, LAD wire uh, uh, under the support of Kusei through the stem strut of the left man to surf to LAD. And after wiring to left uh, LAD, we perform first time kiss and balloon technique. And after kiss and balloon technique, we use a 3.5 uh, balloon to prepare the LAD. Then put the LAD uh, stand, uh, two stand. One is from uh, me to proximal because after balloon dilatation, here is some dissection. And the other from uh, proximal into the left mid. And then we perform uh, NC balloon part again, followed by uh, NC balloon post dilatation. Then rewiring again. Every time when I cross dense, uh, I cross dense trap, I will use the uh, help with Kusei in make sure making sure that the proximal part of the wire was in uh, inside the stand, not outside the stand. And then the second uh, piece of balloon technique and final part. So we could see uh, this is my. Uh, final angiogram. If you remember uh, the initial diagnosis, you could see the cirque was very big. If we don't use uh, IVAS, we, we will not know uh, how big it is. So in this case, uh, I use uh, 
good support and uh, microcaster and Gaia second wire to help me across the sub total cushion. And I also use Crusade several times because when I perform Lightman flow technique, Crusade helped me wiring the, the wire complicated well uh, more easily. And uh, I'm happy to introduce the second case. This is a 58 year old uh, lady admitted also to non STEMI, but this patient came here with cardiogenic shock and respiratory failure. So while well, initial admission, he was intubated and under vasopressor from his uh, echocardiogram. You can see his atrial pressure was around 40, 40%. And this is his ECG. Diffuse ST elevation uh, with borderline ST elevation over AVR uh, by ECG with suspect maybe it's a uh, uh, three vessel disease. And from the diagnosis uh, angiogram, we could see uh, LAD plasma is near total occlusion with faint distal, uh, distal flow. And the circle was a discrete lesion, but it was very near the circle ostium. And RCA was also diffuse lesion. So due to three basal disease, in this case, we also need to consult our cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular surgeon first. But uh, I think maybe our hospital's cardiovascular surgeon was not so hungry. So uh, the patient refused the procedure and the patient back to uh, uh, here. So which lesion would you uh, treat first? In my opinion, uh, in this case, I would treat uh, LAD first because in this condition, cardiogenic shock, I wish to improve the patient's uh, wall motion of uh, anterior wall. So I will treat uh, LAD first. And I would also use IVERS to confirm is it truly osteo, circ osteo lesion or the circ uh, plug was, uh, has ex extended involving into the distal left limb. And because due to cardiogenic shock, after fix the left side part, I think I will also fix the right coronary artery to complete revascularization. So in this case, okay, we used uh, the APT's hemostasis introducer. It was good because it could could let you use seven French guiding caster and even from radio approach, okay? And under uh, seven French guiding caster and APT microcaster and Xi'an wire, our Xi'an wire touch, uh, was stuck over here. So we changed to a uh, Gaia second. The total occlusion seems very, very short. So Gaia second wire crossed easily. And after balloon dilatation, we check IVAS. The distal vessel was seems have few plug, but due to negative remodeling, it seems very small. And uh, the good uh, landing zone seems over this uh, diagonal bridge because there seems few plug over here, and the diameter was around uh, uh, two point five. And during the proximal mid part, you can see huge plug uh, burden over here, and you can see the uh, carina where this is a circle wire uh, back into the LAD and inside into left man. You can see due, before the crina, the LAD ostium, including a uh, crina, there's a steel plug over here and a few plug over the left man, distal left man. And if you check IVAS from the uh, left circumferential artery, if we focus on uh, uh, proximal surf, you can see there's a plug, huge plug burden over left circumferential uh, uh, ostium even due to the carina and into the left man. So in this case, we still think this left man bifurcation may be the maybe, maybe not one, one, one. So if we want to treat this lesion due to the uh, LAD osteo lesion, uh, circ osteo lesion, also distal left man has few plug, but still extended from circ, circ osteum. So we think we might uh, put two state strategy. Why this case, I didn't choose Kulo, instead I choose Digger Crush. Actually, the two side, uh, the two basal size diameter was similar, but because the angle was a little wide, and the most important reason because I I don't want to remove my LAD wire since the distal basal was very small and uh, have a total occlusion. I wish to leave my wire in the LAD uh, during the whole procedure, so I choose DK crush. Okay, uh, so. Uh, first of all, I put a uh, uh, stand over uh, proximal to mid LD. What, why I put over here? Because I was kind of concerned this has a few plug burden over here. Also, this surface was very small, but it was due to negative remodeling because very, very few plug 
uh, burden from the IVAS to show. And after uh, uh, LAD stem, now we prepare the left, uh, left circumferential stem. Uh, when we want to do a uh, decay crush, uh, we will lay the uh, circ stem uh, one millimeter protruding into the left limb and then uh, uh, inflate the stem and then crush, crush by the already stem by NC balloon. Then we will perform uh, wiring again. And when we wiring, we didn't move the LAD wire. We use the third wire under crochet support to cross the left man to third stem into the third. And now perform the first time kissing balloon technique. After kissing technique, we perform the, our uh, main branch stem from left man uh, to mid LAD. And finally, uh, a stem implantation, then perform part. And after this procedure, we perform wire uh, switch again. It, uh, the same reason we don't, uh, we don't remove our LED wire, we use the other wire by crusade, wiring the left man to LED through the stem strap to third and perform the second kissing balloon technique and uh, followed by final part. And this is our uh, final angiogram. So in this case, in this case, uh, just like our initial initial plan, we also fix the RCA uh, to complete revascularization. And uh, in this case, we use uh, microcaster Gaia wire to cross the LAD total, which was very simple. But what is we use Crusade again to perform the decay crush technique, and it help it help us to uh, do the wire cross more conveniently. In this case, we also use uh, the hemostasis introducer, so we complete this procedure by radial approach. So we could see uh, after the procedure, the vessel pressure was discontinued, and five days later, the, vessel, uh, the patient was uh, intubation successfully. Initially, the patient's renal function was not well. Actually, we was very worried about a uh, large amount of contrast injection, but due to improved cardiogenic shock, we could see luck very lucky his renal function is back to normal now. So initially his cardiac was around 40% uh, uh, ejection pressure and the BMP was high. You can see after the procedure, the uh, anterior motion was improved and the follow-up BMP was decreased uh, due to 300. And clinically the patient was uh, become being well. Uh, so today uh, the last case uh, I want to share is um, kind of uh, a difficult case for me because this is a, a 57 year old man admitted also due to non stemi And his ECG was RBBB, which didn't told me which is a lesion. And this is the angiogram. We could see there's a mid critical lesion with kind of a neurismal change over here. But if you've seen this case from Chuluma, you will see uh, this is region collateral. So here is a short total occlusion. And this is his right, uh, cor uh, right corner angio angiogram. It seems that there is a short total occlusion. It may be easy to fix, but what really, but what really problem is the distal long total occlusion. We could see the collateral was uh, come from uh, distal bifurcation. So uh, just like a professor do just ask us, which lesion will you want to treat first? Now I have problem because I have two total occlusion. One thing simple, LAD total occlusion, but this is not intraluminal uh, intra uh, true lumen. It's a uh, region collateral because from lateral view. And the right corner artery, also this total occlusion was short, but there is a long total occlusion weight over here. So uh, in my opinion, uh, my strategy is since left total occlusion was short and since simple, I will fix left side first. And under uh, the uh, uh, guiding caster, a uh, six French, uh, we choose excessive microcaster and filter wire. You can see the wire stuck over here. So uh, we use a uh, Gaia signal wire to cross the lesion, cross the lesion. And since because it is a big angle, uh, after uh, sequential balloon dilatation, actually I want to see IVAS, but IVAS can across here. So, uh, in this case, I use uh, Expressman. It, it's a kind of uh, extension caster. You can see under Expressman support, the IVAS come here, and we check IVAS for the CTO size, 
and, and landing because it's a very huge size. And because this angle, uh, our stand can over can still pass over here. So we still under expressment support. Uh, we can see we put a four over a thirty two bare metal stand over here. And then uh, under expressment support, we also put deliver a four point five NC balloon for post balloon dilatation. See the patient roots are a little big, so after the procedure, we also use expressment to help us get a good quality of image. So after uh, fix the left coronary artery, now uh, maybe uh, one month or two months uh, later, the next time admission, we fix the uh, right coronary artery total occlusion this time. You can see the main total occlusion is simple, but the really problem is the distal part. If the analysis of this CTO, we can see these two parts, but the really problem is here because it seems don't have a clear entry point and there has a, a side bridge over here. And CQ lens was over 20 millimeter. Also no angulation, no calcification, but the distal true lumen was at a bifurcation. So this case, I need good support. I use seven French long sheets, 45 centimeter destination with 70 French uh, M plus uh, guiding caster and the control lateral side uh, control uh, left corner. I use a guiding caster for control lateral injection. You can see under APT microcatheter, and we could cross use the on wire across the first shirt uh, CTO very clearly. And I laid my CN wire to the side branch because this total occlusion was uh, don't have clear stump and has a, a, a side branch over here. So I shift my microcatheter over the wide microcatheter to crusade because crusade could help us uh, help my Gaia second to puncture to end puncture to the entry point uh, um, more suitable. But the next problem is because the C2 cross was a little kind of long and crusade was stuck over here. Also, he, he, uh, it helped me guide the entry point. So during the procedure, I shift crusade back to ABD microcatheter again and uh, use Gaia second to cross the total occlusion. And then with Expressman, the uh, extension guiding caster support, I uh, deliver my one of balloon to cross the total occlusion successfully. So uh, don't forget, I still have another branch. So I use Crusade again with Cyan Black, which has uh, much lubricity to help me uh, ent uh, enter the uh, PO branch. And after sequential balloon dilatation, you can see this is our uh, final angiogram. And in this case, uh, uh, his uh, cardiac also seen a little bit improved, and patient's uh, dyspnea and short tightness was in also improved. So in this case, uh, you can see because the total occlusion has a proximal uh, side branch, distal bifurcation, so I switch from Microcast uh, over the wire microcaster and crusade uh, intermittently to uh, help me cross the CTO. And in this case, I also use the expressman uh, to help me uh, deliver IBUS, deliver four or stand, deliver 4.5 NC balloon, and even help us to increase support to uh, deliver one or CTO balloon cross RCA total occlusion. So, so, uh, so uh, Today, my topic was my civil CTO case sharing with good PCI tools. Uh, as a young interventionist, I still have much, much to learn. But uh, I think that now we, nowadays we have many good PCI tools. 90% uh, of my CTO uh, was uh, uh, accomplished by uh, a microcatheter and Asahi Gaia wire. And today, I also want to introduce Crusade because like the previous case we just said, Crusade could help us for this proximal stump with side branch and could also help us with this distal cap at bifurcation. And Crusade could also, this is another case, when our entry point was in the wrong position, in the full zoom, Crusade could also help us use parallel guide, uh, wire technique to guide the guide second to the distal true zoom. And uh, uh, like the previous two cases, Crusade could also help us to uh, wiring a uh, wire uh, more con conveniently to cross stand side branch to perform two stand strategy more easily. And Crusade could also, in this case, is a, a big angle. 
a crusade could also help us to perform reverse wire technique. You could see from this angel, uh, the circle has a big angle. And we accomplish this case by a crusade technique. Uh, beyond crusade, after you cross uh, the total occlusion, and the next problem is how you deliver your equipment into the position. So uh, today it's happy to introduce the expressman, which is a new uh, extension guiding catheter. Uh, like my case just showed, uh, this guide caster could help us to deliver largest balloon, a 4.5 4 NC balloon. It also could help us deliver larger stem, 4 uh, rebel stem. It also could help us to deliver longer stem. Uh, this is one of my, another case. You can see the diffuse RCA uh, lesion. And after I was confirmed, uh, uh, the lesion may be 60 millimeter. So I put my uh, 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 expressment over here and we, uh, we could see. Because express special, uh, special design, it has the longest guide segment, so it could deep engage. And because it's 90 long shaft, it's embedded structure, so it has better crushability. So we could see, uh, we put our uh, 60 centimeter stand over here. And because extension uh, expressment also have a side hole, the initial design was led to decrease pressure damping, but because the side hole, since much uh, contrast could come into uh, the vessel, so, so when we uh, uh, confirm the stem position, it seems it will have better quality of image. So you can see in this case, the 60 centimeter, 60 centimeter per, uh, stem was delivered successfully with uh, expressment support. So uh, I think um, I think this one. I think 2020 was not uh, not a good year. It may be the worst of times, but thank God we have so much high tech uh, PCI tools. So for PCMM, it was also the best of time. It helped us to uh, accomplish some complex cases. And thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Yang. Uh, very great case and uh, and a great job and a lot of uh, uh, teaching points. And uh, we, we have time to ask you one or two questions. Any uh, comment on the question from the panelists? I think, again, it's a great, a great uh, work uh, because uh, like uh, Dr. Uh, why you say why? <laughs> uh, sorry. Dr. Liang. Liang. <laughs> okay, Dr. Liang. Yeah, thanks. Because uh, thanks. They, they show the uh, very important devices that they all uh, city of PCI center they, they need. Uh, for example, this uh, dual lumen catheter. I think it's uh, one uh, device that's more important from to do a lot of uh, situations, not only city of PCI. And I, I think it's a uh, a uh, very important device in the ECAT lab. Uh, you showed a very, uh, with a very expertise about the uh, different scenarios in, in the use of dual lumen cutter. Uh, I, I think it is um, one uh, uh, part of the important uh, of the ECAT lab of the uh, of the centers in C2PCI and other uh, situations. Of course, uh, Mexico, we don't have a dual lumen cutter. Uh, we try to use uh, only uh, the old techniques like a CISO or parallel wires only. Oh. Yeah. With uh, different uh, micro catheters, but of course uh, we try to to have this uh, dual lumen catheter because I think it's uh, very important. Uh, I don't have experience about uh, the APT devices because in Mexico again we don't have that now. Uh, uh, but uh, but it is interesting to uh, that they use a micro catheter. For example, you can um, uh, generate this uh, how to say torque ability to try to advance in the calcific uh, calcification lesions. How does the comport, uh, how to say the, the performance of this uh, micro catheter IP, uh, of IPT in this uh, CTO with a very uh, hard calcification? Do you have uh, an experience with this one uh, about that? Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Morris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, today, <laughs> today, today, my, my cases was not uh, so calcification, but uh, in some case, when you finally cross your uh, uh, CTO wire, cross the CTO, but you, uh, the most uh, common condition is due to heavy calcification or hard lesion, we can cross our one balloon. So in this case, we will use our guiding catheter extension. 
in the in the old time, we will use such as guideliner to deep engage and put our uh, one of balloon cross. But today I have shown the last case we use expressman to deep uh, deep engage it into the coronary artery. I think, in my opinion, I think perform CTO or solar lesion was the top is calcification. You need good support. So if you have found my last case, I use long sheets. I use seven French guiding M plus, and I also use uh, Expressman deep seated into the uh, mid portion two to three turn of the RCA to help me cross the one no balloon. Well, once all this fail, well, unfortunately, maybe this is a total occlusion need rota ablation, which I, I didn't. I, I still have few experience about about this field. Okay, thank you, Dr. Liang, and a very great great job. And I have only one suggestion for the ambiguous proximal CTO cap. And uh, you use a uh, Gaia tool to puncture the ambiguous proximal cap. Sometimes it's dangerous, and uh, usually uh, yeah, they use iris to to find uh, where the proximal cap is, and then choose the, the right wire, and then, uh, and then make a right tip, make a right tip curve, and then that that will be better. So, but uh, you you really did a very very good job. Thank you. And, uh, Doctor, uh, Doctor, could I ask a question? Because it's uh, uh, also that's my first two case. Uh, if this case was in in your hand, the first case, the first two case, uh, would you perform two stand strategy, or will you will not, or will you perform single stand? And which kind of two stand strategy will you prefer? Thanks. Yeah, uh, for the first case, I, I prefer the uh, the single stand strategy because the circumflex is not that big and uh, I will use the jail the balloon technique and the two uh, single stands crossover then uh, uh, slightly kissing balloon and maybe use a drug coated balloon for circumflex because it takes a small and uh, for the second case and uh, I think a two stand strategy uh, is reasonable and in one hospital we don't use DK crush we use DR crush and uh, uh, the DR cross technique published uh, in CCI, I think two years ago. A uh, different uh, difference uh, between DR crush and DK crush is uh, at first we deploy the the side branch stand, and then maybe wants to crush, and then cross the the side uh, the, the the side branch stand, dilate side branch uh, uh, strut cell. And then use a, a balloon to crush the stand from the main vessel. There is no first time kissing because the first time kissing sometimes uh, make a uh, dissection uh, in the main vessel and also uh, make a uh, uh, mental carina protruding to the main vessel, make it difficult to deliver the main vessel stand. And then we, we deliver the, the main vessel stand and then do a uh, kissing blow again. So, but the uh, uh, DK crush uh, uh, have a lot of data, but uh, uh, I think the DR crush uh, is ac accepted by a lot of uh, uh, doctors from uh, China, United States, and uh, Europe. You you can you, you can watch the paper from the uh, CCI. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. I will uh, uh, introduce our uh, uh, next speaker, Dr. Gu from Spain, and uh, uh, she will talk about NC along with a spherical tip. Please, Dr. Gu. Sorry, uh, one second. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, I'm in the beginning, yeah. Uh, good afternoon uh, to, <laughs> to, to 30 uh, here in Spain. <laughs> I'm Teresa Gil Jiménez from Hospital Clínico San Cecilio in Granada in South Spain. Uh, okay, uh, we are in uh, a structural cardiac intervention times every day. We have uh, technical advances, new approaches, new devices, but I think that we cannot forget about our coronary patients. 
So first of all, I want to thank APT Medical and Ifasa Hospital to inviting me to this seminar that I think is so necessary. So uh, throughout the, the, the talk, we will focus on the non-compliant balloon catheter with a spherical tip. Uh, all we know that coronary uh, in PCI uh, tried to go the way from uh, this to, to this. The, the main steps are these three ones, okay? The, uh, the first step is to cross the lesion. Guide wires uh, is the, the essential tools, for, uh, but other devices such as the microcatheter or stencil catheter could be decisive. Uh, we have seen the the specialized in chronic total occlusion or Dr. Norte in a bifurcation show us that uh, to cross the lesion could be very difficult. Uh, next step uh, will be the dilatation. A good preparation of the lesion is essential to achieve the next one is the stent deployment. Uh, it, it seems like the last step but is not always the end of the angioplasty. Optimal stent deployment is necessary to minimize the likelihood of the procedure complication and the stent restenosis. Because of uh, uh, our patient, uh, are, um, every time more comorbidities, diabetes, uh, chronic renal failure, uh, prevalence of patients with this kind of coronary severely calcified are uh, more frequent, and I really like this analogy. It's stolen from Dr. Sanchez Rubio in Zaragoza because uh, this this feeling of working in stone, trying to break in stone in the coronaries, are uh, increasing are very frequent. The approach of this resistance coronary lesions are mm, that are non delightable uh, using uh, conventional devices is, uh, uh, is a challenge, and if we have only conventional devices, probably we will suffer during the angioplasty. So uh, when we treat calcified lesions, uh, we have high risk of complication, dissection, perforation, and vessel occlusion. Uh, but if we are not enough uh, aggressive uh, during the angioplasty, the underexpansion stent is a predictor of high uh, risk of restenosis and stent thrombosis. So if we are not uh, enough uh, intense at the beginning of the angioplasty, probably we will need to do it in, in the future or with a, with a complication. So we must put on scale. Uh, the treatment of the these calcified lesion that are very frequently circular, that are uh, non dilatable we have a, 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 a lot of weapons to, to go uh, for them. So the first step in the treatment of the calcified lesion are the, the balloons, any compliant balloon, non-compliant balloon, very uh, high pressure balloons. Uh, scoring and cuttings, and even uh, if the, the lesion remains not dilatable, we could use atherectomy, uh, intracoronary laser, or lithotripsy. But the, the protagonism of this uh, um, seminar, of this part of the seminar, is a new compliant balloon. The, the, the main characteristic is that they are done in a, a more rigid and resistant material uh, with uh, inflation capacity to high pressure, adequ adequate uh, high pressure resistance. Um, and that makes that the non-compliant balloons are indicated for hard calcified lesions. And the other main characteristic is that they have a predictable balloon compliance uh, to allow the precise diameter sizing. Uh, perfect for dilatation and to maximize the, the wall opposition. Uh, but this performance characteristic are often re interrelated and with the more rigid and resistant material comes the uh, uh, a worse navigability, uh, uh, worse pushability, trackability, crossability. The very high friction makes that non-compliant balloons uh, lose the battle of the, 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 the variability and the crossability. They have a good con uh, in dilatation. So uh, the 
the Conqueror uh, spherical tip, no compliant um, balloon, uh, in addition, uh, uh, to introduce a technical advance, uh, we're going to talk about that, tries to improve some of the other bad details of this uh, non-compliant because they are designed to ensure the, uh, the pushability. Uh, they have an optimal visualization and, and reduce the, the resistance while uh, advancing. Um, Okay, here can we see a, a picture that a, a, a traditional uh, conqueror balloon, and this is a spherical tip. The, the unique spherical tip avoids, tries to avoid the collision between the stent and the non compliant catheter and, and, and provides an, an opera, opera, opera uh, experience, uh, reduce the complexity and, and the time that we consume to, to while we are advancing or trying to advance the catheter. Here can we see a, 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 an, an example. It's a male, 61 years old, a high blood pressure, dyslipemia, and smoking, a stable angina with a positive treadmill test. Uh, the right coronary artery is diffusely uh, diseased, but a significant and geographically a significant lesion, but a negative uh, FFR. And in the LAD, we can see a significant lesion in the proximal segment. Uh, we did mm, the, the FFR that was positive in basal uh, uh, conditions and positive in the middle segment after adenosine. So uh, uh, we made a pre uh, uh, with a non compliant balloon 2A20, an implant, uh, a long stand, uh, Everolimus 2.75 by 48. Here uh, can see the result, and in, in the stem base, uh, we can see this area of under expansion. This uh, mm, diameter reduction mm, could make difficult to cross a, a, a traditional long compliant balloon, but the spherical tip uh, goes uh, mm, to the end of the stem with no, with no resistance. It, it was easy to post the light this under expansion area. Uh, our colleagues said that this kind of balloons uh, slip, slide very easy. Uh, the, after the post dilatation, the FFR was negative in this um, case. Uh, if we made uh, uh, a comparison between a traditional a tapper uh, a stand and a, a spherical tip while advancing the, the, uh, across the stand, uh, the, the, the traditional, the trapper tip, may collide uh, uh, against the edge of the stent. All the pushing force that we, that we exert to, to trying to cross is, is returned uh, to a, a resistant force. Here can we see all this uh, resistant force, uh, but the, uh, the spherical tip catheter um, will slip across the stent. Uh, all this uh, pushing force uh, exerts is vectorized, is divided into a lot of uh, centripetal vectors and, and make the mm, to, 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 uh, to slit and to go uh, with less uh, uh, effort to, through, the, through the stent. Uh, in this graphic, we can see that. Uh, how a traditional balloon, while we are uh, uh, pushing, the, the resistance will rapidly increase, but the spherical tip maintain this resistance is homogeneous, it's not uh, all the push, uh, all is return. So male, uh, 42 years old, smoking, inferior STEMI, here we can see an acute occlusion of the middle segment of the right coronary artery, and the left artery has no significant lesion, collateral uh, circulation to the right coronary artery. Uh, thrombectomy was performed, and after uh, nitroglycerin intracoronary, this is the result, and, and post dilate all the sand, and this is the, the result. Uh, this is an experimental model of uh, post dilatation of the stents with different curves and comparison the two ca catheters, the spherical and the tapered. 
the, the, the surface uh, uh, force detected with the the spherical tip is is less uh, create on a smaller contact force uh, compared with the with the the tapered and uh, here we can see uh, one of our nightmares uh, hooking a strut and this is structuring the the stents with the with a traditional uh, balloon uh, this is uh, i'm going to show you two typical cases that the uh, spherical tip makes you uh, hell uh, this is a man 48 uh, years old, um, high blood pressure, dyslipemia, former smoking, uh, COPD, and multi vessel uh, disease. The, the right coronary artery, the PCI of the right coronary artery, was done a couple of days before in the acute uh, non STEMI. And um, this is a second time program angioplasty to the LAD, this uh, several calcified lesion. Um, was uh, pretty late um, um, putting a, 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 a sirolimus stent to uh, 0.75 plus uh, 20, 26 uh, millimeters a cent. And here in the stem base, we can see how is the, the tight curve of the stent and this under expansion area because of this calcium, uh, the, the, the spherical tip cross easily and um, post dilates and the, the result. And this is very similar, uh, but uh, 48 years old, uh, the red coronary artery in the acute stenny and uh, severe calcified lesion in the proximal LAD. Uh, we need uh, to predilate this, uh, th this, this lesion, focal lesion. We need uh, several predilatation with different balloons. And after this stand deployment, this, we had this notch, but this with a non compliant balloons, uh, uh, this it was a result. So, conqueror uh, non compliant balloon. This the, the last uh, case, a uh, complex patient is a woman, uh, 43 years old, smoking and dyslipemia, uh, 16 years old before. Uh, uh, she had a non stemi uh, uh, She had three vessels, and this is a LAD, proximal circumflex, and assume of the uh, posterior descending, uh, uh, left ventricular ejection fraction preserve, and the doctor in this moment decide medical treatment. Uh, asymptomatic, this six, uh, 16 years. And now the summer uh, comes with an acute uh, inferior semi. Here we can see the right coronary artery occluded in the middle segment. Uh, with the predilatation, we can see how is this cure. It's difficult to see in this uh, uh, picture, but uh, there's a lot of calcium, and only with the predilatation, the the right coronary artery was uh, um, has a, a long dissection, uh, but impossible to cross the stem. Mm, we need to predilate and put this long stand the section of the distal edge of the stand, a new stand, and the section of the proximal uh, edge of this stand, so uh, uh, another stand, three um, stands, and good result. You can see how we need a stension of the catheter and and second time, we programmed to do the angioplasty for the LAD and the left circumflex. Here you can see that the right, the, the left anterior descending has a bad flow, two, tini, two flow, uh, to aneurysm, uh, and only trying to protect the, dia the diagonal branch and crossing the guide wire, new section, the knees uh, bail uh, stand to, to seal the bailout, the, this, this section of the diagonal branch. Predilation, the LAD with a uh, spherical tip. This is spherical tip here, help us to cross uh, through the, through no, near the stand, the strut that was floating in this uh, uh, no programming tap uh, protrusion. 
and this stem was implanted and uh, good results. But this is not what I want to show you. <laughs> uh, the circumflex. The lesion in the proximal portion of the left circumflex, it, 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 it seems to be easy. Uh, we pre, pre and put in a stand and this is uh, the result. But we thought the, the diameter of this part it was bigger than this stand and post dilate with a spherical tip. Um, and this is the result after the post dilatation of this stand. The section of the distal edge of the stent. So uh, a new stent to seal the, the section, but, but still close uh, the third stent. And at the end, uh, happy ending. Uh, what I, I want to show you with this, uh, this patient is we're sure that this young woman has any kind of uh, predisposition to the dissection because it happens on the three vessels probably in the right coronary artery had to do with the extension of the catheter in the diagonal has to do uh, with the guide wire but here we think that maybe had to do with this uh, uh, the spherical tip uh, this is an extension. Um, I talked before that it has not the same consistency as the guide wire. Um, in its cure, uh, I think it play a trick on us. So uh, the spherical tip uh, help us uh, every day. You can see that we use it so much, but we must be careful when is in a in a tight cure is not inside inside the stent and nothing else thank you for your attention okay uh, thank you dr q i uh, think you introduced the uh, very smart design about the spherical teeth uh, balloon uh, to be honest um, I, I even me i i don't have the chance to use it and uh, Thank you to introduce this to us. And then any uh, question or comment from the panels? Oh, uh, uh, could I? Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Liang. Could I? Uh, ha uh, I have tried the spherical uh, NC balloon once, and because it was not uh, so so much available at my hospital, so uh, in the usual case, uh, my. Uh, uh, sometimes after stand, uh, we use NC uh, post dilatation. The NC balloon can close the stand very well. So sometimes I will kink. I will kink the NC balloon to make. Uh, I think the rationale was very similar to let it has an uh, angle when it touch touch the resistant. Mm. It will bend it. <laughs> yeah. So now it mm. has a spherical balloon. Oh, we we no longer to to <laughs> to. Crush uh, to bend the NC balloon. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't have available in your uh, your your site, I think it may be worth a try. Okay. Oh. Any other question or comment? Oh, no, I think it is a, a great debate again. Uh, you know, we have uh, the opportunity to every everything. I think uh, you know, have the, some experience about this uh, situation with the. Um, Let's say the from the proximal stem when try to optimize in the, uh, the proximal stem because the guide wire is uh, uh, very near to the struts and of course everything uh, can help it with this uh, body wire technique it's a very old uh, for try to uh, uh, advance the, the balloon not uh, too uh, near to the struts and then uh, mm -hmm. optimizing the proximal but I think it is a uh, Will be a good option for try to uh, less uh, devices in the coronary artery or in this balloon could be uh, uh, help it to optimize and very well the proximal ostiums in in some cases. Okay, thank you. And I, I think that because that sort of the time limit, uh, uh, I would like to introduce our uh, last uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Morales uh, from yeah. school. Please. 
Okay, really, I'm very impressed about the, this, uh, uh, about you, because uh, our great operators and CTO PCI in very complex uh, situations in calcification. So, uh, and it's, I only showed a very single case. This is not a so uh, big spectacular like uh, Dr. Liang of uh, acute myocardial infarctions, and this is the first angio. All the in my hospital, they use this uh, radial approach like a first approach for everything. And this case was a multivessel disease, a necrotic disease, and a chronic ocular occlusion of right coronary artery, and then, this, of course, a uh, occlusion of the LAD, and it's um, very proximal. And uh, uh, conventionally, we use a uh, uh, radial approach with this uh, uh, Terumo uh, devices, like a uh, uh, glacius blender 7 and 6 French. So uh, this is the. Uh,